Ian Blackford. Ian Blackford. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And can I give every best wish to the England and Northern Ireland uh, ladies football team as they approach the Euro Championships? There's nothing better than seeing your teams in these finals. Can we also commemorate the passing 40 years ago of Terence Higgins and all those that have died from AIDS since then? And I'm sure, Mr. Speaker, the whole House will want to join with me in passing condolences to the family of friends of the Scottish football goalkeeping legend Andy Gorham, who sadly passed far too early last weekend. He will long live in the memory of the best goalkeeper that many of us have seen. <coughs> Mr Speaker, it is easy to forget that only ten days ago the Prime Minister was dreaming of a third term. <laughs> Mr Speaker, you know, it is often said that a week is a long time in politics, but it turns out that ten days is truly a lifetime. Because, let's face it, it is a minor miracle that the Prime Minister has even made it through to Prime Minister's questions, and he really ought to see the faces behind him, because, Prime Minister, it really is over. The Prime Minister is desperately clinging on to his own fantasy, but the public can't afford to put up with this farce of a government a minute longer. Today, we should be talking about the Tory cost of living crisis, soaring inflation and the growing cost of Brexit. But instead, it is always, it's always about him. How many more ministers need to quit before he finally picks up his pen and writes his own resignation letter? Perhaps that's what he's doing now. <laughs> actually, actually, Mr. Speaker, I was just jotting down some notes on his, on his question, which I thought was uh, excellent when he was talking about the economy, uh, because uh, that is the issue that is the, the country uh, faces, and that is the and that is where this government is introducing, I think, the most important solution: helping countries, uh, helping uh, families up and down the country uh, with £1,200 uh, going into their bank accounts uh, right now, cutting taxes for 30 million people, 330. Pound tax cut and helping half a million people into work uh, through the Way to Work scheme. That is a fantastic thing to be get, getting on and doing. That is the priority of this government, and uh, that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm glad he, I'm glad he likes it. Ian Blackford. My goodness, nothing to see. We should all move on if we live in the world of the <laughs> Prime Minister. You know, a few weeks ago I compared the Prime Minister to Monty Python's Black Knight. Actually, turns out I was wrong. He's actually the dead parrot. <laughs> whether, whether he knows it or not, he's now an ex Prime Minister. Yeah, but yeah. He will leave behind two deeply damaging legacies. I hope the dishonesty of his leadership follows him out of the Downing Street door. But the other legacy is that of Brexit. And that will stay. Because I'm sad to say that the Labour Party now fully supports yeah. Brexit. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, Scotland wants a different future not just a different Prime Minister. So if the Prime Minister won't resign, will he call a general election and allow Scotland the choice of an independent future, free from the control of Westminster? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I, I noticed that his remark that the Labour Party had given up on uh, on returning to the European Union was not greeted with rapture by the benches opposite, and that's because it's not, it's not true. Uh, they want to go back in uh, just as he does. I think that's a, that, is a, that is a terrible uh, mistake. It would be anti democratic, Mr. Speaker. And as for the referendum uh, that he wants, well, we had one of them, uh, as I've told him before, uh, in 2014.